just wanted to apologize in advance with the quality of the video. Um, aside from that, it is still very informative, so anyone wanting to play OTT, definitely watch this video. You will learn a lot from it. Hi everyone, my name is Dogs, and thank you all for coming to my channel. So today I've been given the privilege to interview Barnabas Lee, who made Top 8 for Premium at BCS Sydney. So, uh, Barnabas, um, how do you feel making Top 8 with in Premium at BCS Sydney? Uh, hello. Um, yeah, it feels pretty decent. I, just, I definitely came in just having wanting to have fun. Um, so coming top eight is insane. I know a lot of people work hard for it, and you know I, I work. You know I, I put some effort into it. You know I, I have to know like what the cards do, but yeah, this result just 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 exceeded expectations like entirely. So this is definitely happy with this result. Yeah, well that's that's always good to hear. You know what I mean? Like um, just like Francis, uh, he was just coming to you know to have fun, and you know he did well. So that's and that's always good to hear. Yeah, I think that's what that's that's got to be the strat or something, you know. Just just enjoy what you do. So yeah, it's spoken from a true man, you know. Oh yeah, exactly. Alright, so uh, we'll go from uh, the top right from Reverence Frost Dragon. So why did you run one Reverence Frost Dragon? Um, so everyone knows this guy's Mr. Stack heals. Um, I in my original list I was running three. Because I thought this thing was overtuned. <laughs> I thought it was just, it just sounded ridiculous. This is like, wait, I can put a Matarasu and heals and just straight up atop my deck, but like, it's just for a soul blast. So, having it one, I think I took the idea, I pretty much take, like, the namesake of my deck is Brandon. Brandon the Anjing. Uh, it means dog in it though. Um, so, he, he only runs Reference Rush at one. I don't really know why. Um, but he, he says that it's a dead card in your hand m most of the time, so... But it's definitely helpful, that one-off, like, I'm, I must have healed, like, once once per game because of that one-off, like, it's, it's extremely useful. It's pretty strong, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord. So with the three armor Tarasus, uh, why did you end up running those? Um, so these, these are good, obviously very good synergy with the G-Guards, uh, if it's revealed, which... A lot of your G gods do, or just two. Yeah, just two of them do. Um, it it works on the opponent's battle phase, so you give 10k to your vanguard. It's really good. Um, also, you just reveal with Calico, which you'll see later, and your vanguard becomes like pretty much unguardable and very threatening. And with the restrictions that OTT has on guarding, that's pretty damn hard to deal with. So, also, it's a good like top three stacker. So. Damn, that's yeah, Quite this is a strong. great card. Far out. And this cheeky little yeah. card here, um, the Brilliant Witch Popo, uh, why did you run... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so th this card is just, this card's insane. Like, if you get to, like, you can you can get this, like, with a certain build, you can get this, like, on your second stride turn. And you're pr pretty, pretty much with each of you. With Ichikashima, the, the stride, you just pretty much can't guard from hand unless you have a Blitz Order. It's it's insane. Like, you probably only need two. Like, even if it goes to drop, you have ways to get out of there. If it goes to damage, you just use a Reverence Rush. Like, it's fine. So, it's 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 insanely strong. The interactions is crazy. Alright, that's... Yeah, damn. And then, uh, for the last great free, so the interaction of uh, Susano. Um, <laughs> why don't you run him? Why, why do I run him? It's pretty self-explanatory. He's a history cold eye. Um, good plus, you know, good good on hit stride, that thing, that little Kirin thing. It's good. He's good. Solid. Nice, nice, nice. Um, now, a card we have seen popping up a little bit more in GT is the 4 Dory Wing. Um, what was the reasoning for this card? Uh, this guy is pretty. He's pretty. He's pretty nuts. He's pretty much a green shade in in Keta decks. Um, I used it mostly in the early game because I would keep. If I was going second, especially, I would keep um, a heal. 
it and I'll just use it early and then um, salvage it back with a Dior wing. Oh, nice, nice. That's... Yeah. Also, yeah, get your popos and everything, anything you want, pretty much. That has to be OTT, but... That's pretty strong. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, kind of like a green shade, but for uh, any Kita deck that has a specific clan. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, a card we don't see ran in too many builds these days is the uh, Ichikishima. Uh, what was the reason for that one? Yeah, the Grade 2, um, this is another one of Brandon's texts. Um, I don't, to be honest, I don't entirely understand why he runs it. But it's like, it's costless and it, it provides like good, good enough like early pressure. So it's, that's, that's a worthy inclusion by itself. It also has like good, um, if, if Amato Rossi is going to damage or drop, I can search it with Calico. And it's just 10k power. And it works with G-Guards as well. It's the same effect as Amato Rossi pretty much, except you don't get the crit. Um, yeah. Damn, that's pretty, pretty good. good. Right, yeah, I think in my game against Derek, I used the... I looked at the top card and I saw the OT, and then I had to read it again, just to make sure that I could put it back on top. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much he saw it coming before he, before I did it to him, so that was pretty funny. <laughs> that's funny. It's, it's funny as yeah. well. Now, a, uh, this grade 2 here, the Administrator Angel, definitely quite a strong card. Um, and run at 4 copies. Uh, why did you run this card in your build? Um, the, the promo for OGT like, just came out in stores like really recently um and i was playing with it for a little bit and um i actually really liked the card like early game it like you, you commit stuff um early and you can you can just plus it's it's cb1 top three at the hand and then top or bottom whatever you want and it's just whatever i was committing i was pretty much getting back like for free and if it was grade two i was, I was setting up defensive triggers even on my, on my turn like if they're going to grade three so i pretty much it's pretty, it's pretty damn good. In fact, I think it's a bit overtuned, but uh, maybe running it four is a bit, a bit much. But yeah, we'll have to see. I have to test it more. No, it, it does make sense though. As I said, yeah, especially if you go on second, just giving your vanguard, you know, uh, a defensive trigger, and then obviously if you have like a, a heal guard, it's like essentially twenty k base power to your vanguard. So it does make perfect sense. That's quite strong. Yeah, and it, it being a ride fixture as well is like another reason. It's it's just it's just great. Yeah, it's a very good point. Very valid. Yeah. All right. So next we do have um, Miku of the Mirror Moon. Say, I think that's how you say it. Um, why did you? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> um, why did you run this card at four copies? Yeah. So this this card you obviously want to see in your opening hand just to go to like if you if you place it. Use superior iron to Sukiyomi, and Sukiyomi is like a pretty much a free, well not a free, but it's like it's like a G assist, um, pretty much. Uh, I just got to discard a card. You pretty much, and you, uh, you basically don't um, G assist in this deck. It's a very it's very easy to get your ride targets. Uh, like our ratios are pretty good, uh, with the exception of the grade threes. We run, we run a lot of the grade threes, but no, it's 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 a really good card. It has a great second effect as well. Um, look at top two. And you stack it again. We do a lot of stacking in this deck. That's pretty much how I triple crit people the entire day. I've pretty much been doing that the entire day of BCS. It was pretty. It was pretty goddamn insane. <laughs> Boy. Yeah. Yeah, because after I saw you running this card, I was like, because uh, originally I was running um, two Battle Sister Croquette, I think it was. But after seeing you running the say and reading over the card, I'm like. I understood why you ran this card now. This card's, I agree, it's just absolutely insane. So, um, yeah, it's amazing consistency. It's so good. Yeah, it's actually crazy. Um, so the top five searcher, oh, the top five for a grade three searcher. Um, is there anything, uh, any reason why you ran it so free, or it's just kind of just um, deck space was a little bit tight, or? Yeah, yeah, would run it at four. I, I just, I didn't know what to cut. Um, but yeah, it's. Obviously, it works with the Madarasu. It counts as revealing um, any great threes that you want. Popo heals, Reverence Rush. It, it is very versatile and it's, it's a decent booster as well. It's it's pretty good. Hmm. Oh, but very good. Um, and then we yeah. do have a one-off 
uh, Tetra Magus. Um, so what was the uh, reasoning behind the one Tetra Magus? Yeah, I, I don't remember if I used, I think I used this once the entire day. Like, I, don't, I think, I think this is kind of essential to see later. But yeah, you, you want to, you want crits obviously for your Popo turn because that'll be more deadly. I'll kill, I'll kill ranges like, it could be anywhere for, between like two to like, like two onwards pretty much. Like depending on how many crits are left in the deck. So having one more crit is just like game changing. So, hmm. uh, it makes perfect sense. So, um, yeah, so, so, it sounds good. Just good late game card. Yeah, makes makes sense. Makes sense. And then uh, the run uh, goddess of the crescent moon Sukuyomi. Why do you run? Yeah, this is related to the say. Uh, like the four of say, like just searches are out. You only need to see what You only need to run one. Don't want to draw into any others. Hmm, that's good. Good card. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Um. Too honorly. Um, I'm pretty sure this is probably self-explanatory. Oh, definitely. Uh, definitely saved my ass a couple of times against <laughs> Spikes, Grand Blue, basically every other Excel deck in the game. It's just insane. I don't know why they changed it. It's like you can just remove it and just have, it's just it's just ridiculous. Like what? Uh, I don't understand. But yeah, it's, you're on two of. You'll see it. It's all good. You know, I definitely agree. It's such a crazy, crazy card. Yeah, it's just stupid. Um, and then this a cheeky little cat. Um, we run out two copies. Uh, why did you run this card at two copies? Uh, you. It's it's fine. Like I don't I don't actually don't want to mess up my ratios too much because it's a great zero. Uh, if if you if you brick with it, like you have multiple in hand, it's just not great. But. Yeah, this card's like really good, and it's actually kind of it's more versatile than you expect. Like, you can you can do like um, a classic um, stride into the Sterling Witch Momo, and then just have uh, Calico reveal three of Rossi and have like a Vanguard that swings with four crit and restands. But you can also just swing. I'm oh, not swing. Sorry, you can also just search out three cards that you want, and just have your opponent choose two of them, and then just deal ruin like whatever you want back. Or you could just you could just have like. Yeah, you can just do so many things with it, and I, I just think it's great. It's a good filter. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's kind of almost like a... Almost like a Columbard on crack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> okay, yep, nice, nice, nice. Um, okay, so going to the triggers. Uh, I think the crits are very self-explanatory, but... Mm -hmm. 11 is good. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. Uh, with the... Um, Red OT. Uh, why the red OT? Oh, I just think it it just works better with the with the deck. I don't think um, the Keta one is just like well, I don't, I don't really want to deck out to be honest because our, our board will look like it'll be great through heavy. Um, uh, the blue one, like I guess, could work. It's it's fine, but the red OT, it's like we're gonna see crits anyway. We will run a high amount of crits. If we if, usually if you put red OT and crit on something. They they're gonna die, <laughs> especially if you get Shima, Like they just can't, they just can't do anything. And, and lo and behold, I did I did against um, round five, I think, against Andrew Nguyen. And he's just I didn't even Ichigashima, I just I just Dragon Kinged, and then I saw the red OT, just stacked the crit, song twice, and he was dead. It's just it's just insane. He didn't have, it didn't matter if he had a PG. It's just just can't. It's hundred million. Yeah, that's true, that's absolutely crazy. 100 million, crazy. great, swinging twice. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a very, very valid point. Yeah. I guess that's pretty much just the, the main deck. You know, the main deck seems very solid. Um, it's good to see that, you know, ATT is kind of a corn for, instead of like a standard route, more of like a toolbox route, which is really cool, you know? Um, yeah, it's very, very flexible. It's, 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 a, it's a great deck. Now, onto the G-Zone. Um, Alright, so... We'll, 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 we'll uh, skip on the Kirin. I think the Kirin's uh, <laughs> very self-explanatory. Um, yeah, very good. So we'll go with the Dragon King. So what was the reasoning be uh, behind running two Dragon King? Oh, definitely don't run two. I I, I do not have cards for OGT, so I only use, you, you use max one per game, definitely. But he is he can definitely save you if you're if you're down down cards or you're high on damage, you need to heal or. 
Uh, possibly even first try. If you're going second, it's it's a target. Um, so yeah, if you don't want to go into Kirin, you think you want to do a little bit more. You want to get rid of the deck faster. But um, um yeah. That's, good. that's a good point. That's a good point. Alright, so uh, with the Stellar Witch promo, so I think you talked a bit about it before. So the idea is you kind of want to combo this with the Free Month Rasses and kind of just uh, fret and lethal um, both attacks. Yes, yeah. Bas basically, it's it's like what um, you, you're usually riding Susano or something. So 26, reveal three of Madarasu, 56, and then Momo gives herself or three units like 10k. So this with a boost that could be like 70 plus and that's that's restanding which is which is nuts so if they don't have a pg they're pretty much they're pretty much gone bro they're pretty much done <laughs> and if you have a good read like actually i did this against uzair in my final round swiss round and i he g assisted so he showed me his hand and like i, I can tell like when a protect one's in someone's hand because it's different sleeve so I, I saw that he had only one pg so I just I just went into Murmo and, and then Calico and then he was he was done. I checked three crits, he was done. Hey, you know, it works sometimes, you know what I mean? Like it's kind of like I find it funny, it's like you're playing like DP when you like use the Momo because like yeah, it just threatens lethal twice. Well they definitely don't expect it, it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it is. I definitely agree with that. I definitely agree. Um, alright, so we have the GB8 Amaterasu. Why'd you run one copy of that? Don't, don't even, don't even, do not ever go into the GB8. That's, uh, <laughs> that's pure flip point. I do not worry about that one. Okay, we'll I don't that even one. know what it does. Do not do it, bro. <laughs> oh my god. Just replace, uh, just replace the, the extra Dragon King and the GB8 with Wakahirame and the Stride's way better. Don't worry about it, boys. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, and then the card you run at four copies, like Ichigashima, why do you run that at four? Oh, this is like the ace of, this is the absolute ace of the deck. No, like GB3 Oracle, they can't guard with G guards or grade zeros. Congratulations, you can't guard with half your hand. <laughs> Amazing, it simplifies the game. It's like playing Mega Colony without the hate, it's just great. Oh, I, I just love like the way you explain it, it's it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just amazing. Uh, you combine with the Popo, you can't go with anything except Blitz Orders. Check crits, boom, they're dead. It's great. I actually did not know, I forgot about the first uh, effect of Ichikishima, where you like, flip, like, Persona flip, draw two cards. I, I didn't use that once the entire day. Like, I, 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 just, I just forgot about it. I just, I just had no idea. <laughs> Actually, now I think about it myself. I don't really think I ever used it either. You know, like, I, they're, they're probably going to be like, who's this guy that clowned his way to top 8? But if I, you know, if, if I remembered it against um, Uber in the top 8, then it, it, the game would have been a lot closer, I reckon. <laughs> but, like, I, I can definitely see the reasoning behind it, because, like, since you draw so much anyway, I guess kind of like extending each extreme as much as possible, like like three to potentially four turns. Um, I can definitely understand how it's very scary. Yeah, uh, it's. I, I think I definitely underrated the pressure of Ichi as I. Um, I should just be spamming it pretty much second stride onwards. Um, a lot of the time I was going to Dragon King and then I was just checking like some good triggers and that was like good enough for pressure apparently. But um, no, Ichi's really good. She's is insane. Okay, so onto the G guards. Uh, we will remember the money's for Sire. I think we all know what it does by now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's okay. Mine doesn't I... even have pixels on it, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, same here. I'm too poor for that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so first of all, we'll go with the one off. So uh, why did you run the um, octagonal makers? Uh, the card's okay. I don't really. It's alright. I, I, I sometimes I do cheeky things and I just guess. Like what you're meant to do is just you're meant to know what's on top of your deck with either um, like another G guard, which we'll get into, or like uh, some other information like a Matarasu or something. But like, yeah, it's 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 good shield value and it reveals as well. If you get the Ichishima, the Grade Two, or the Matarasu, then yeah, you just gave yourself a defensive trigger. It's great. Nice, no, pretty pretty strong. Yeah. Okay, so next we'll go uh, with the uh, Amaterasu Jigar. Why do you run that at two copies? 
Oh, uh, this one's like uh, pretty much well the one I run. It's like the only CB less G guard, and it's pretty decent shield value, twenty five. Um, you don't reveal um, after its effect, but you do look at the top card, so you do know what it is. So you can accurately you can accurately call <laughs> what grade it is if you're using the one we just mentioned. Or, uh, you know, if you want to draw something, one of your pieces, it's it's good for that as well. Hmm, that's, that's... Yeah, he's good, damn. Okay. Yeah. And then lastly, uh, why don't you run the two Excite Bounces the Bad Boys? Uh, this one's pretty much the one I would go into most of the time. Um, I actually don't use much CB in this deck. Like, you just use a CB, like, just to draw, pretty much. Um, and this is like one of those ways. It reveals good synergy with the grade two and the mana as we discussed. And yeah, it's it's just good enough shield value, twenty k. Um, also, it helps you hunt for defensives. You can put the revealed card at the bottom of the deck if, if you want. So no, it's pretty strong. Yeah, it's essentially, just like a. I guess if you know what your top two cards are, it's, yeah, it's kind of like a. Moving two cards from your deck so you have a high chance that you can trigger there. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe that's everything. So, um, would you make any changes to the deck at all? Uh, definitely. Uh, I think Reverence Rush is like too good to keep at one, but yeah, we'll have to see. Um, a lot of other OTT lists are like, I don't, as, like, I don't know, we haven't discussed this, but I don't run Elementary <laughs> in my list. Which I might change because if people in Melbourne know that I'm not running it, then every dimension player is just gonna <laughs> just bot rush me. <laughs> so actually, I mean, we get two protects from the history call stride, so I figured we didn't need it. Um, but I'll definitely try and make space for it. Um, yeah, maybe change the amount of cycles I run. Um, I need to find that Mickey of the Round Moon for you. The CB1 put a normal unit on top of the deck and like draw a card. Like that, that card's like extremely versatile. I reckon I should, I'd need to include that somewhere. Oh, because that's kind of like a no version of Dora Wing, except it's a CB. And um, I guess you have like a couple of ways of drawing cards. So, like, if you have a Dora Wing, it's like another avenue you can go to. Mm. Mm. Uh, maybe I'll change the soul in crits for the psychic birds. Um, uh, I feel, in my mind, they perform the same way, but this the bird's a bit faster, and you can synergize with other cards, like just taking checking the top card. So, no, um, that makes sense. Yeah, so I'll play around with it a little, see if I like it. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of room to improve, I think. But no, overall, like again, I think it's a very solid list. Um, I definitely wish I ran ran the Sayes now, and. I definitely agree with you. <laughs> you weren't running them? Where were you running? So I was running, um, what was, what was it? I was running two Shokat. Uh, so my, my, my reasoning behind it was I was expecting that I'd be versing a lot of Mega Colony and Chaos because oh, yeah. they were doing else. I was like, okay, I was like, if I, um, run the Shokats, um, I guess I, I, I could put those into the soul. So... Um, I don't have a card on board that the Chaos Breaker play a good lot because at home I was playing with someone who always plays Link Joker. So the big problem was I didn't want to. Oh no, that one guy. Yeah, <laughs> and I didn't want to give them um, a board. They also playing Colony too, by the way. <laughs> so I yeah. just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was trying to uh, figure out ways where I could, um, when I would call stuff, kind of um, reduce the amount of stuff that I'm calling. But mm. I'm ensure that I'm still doing stuff. So again, what I would like if I open the calicos or the trocats stuff like that, I kind of have a body that I could just you know have it on board, suck it the soul, so it's removed, and then try and do some manipulation. Uh, manipulation. But um, in the end, I feel like even if I had like a say, it'd still be okay because like I could use a skill and then maybe call over her with like a a calico because I guess you know say can you know tends to actually dig you know pretty fast for the build. Um, so, I definitely, uh, yeah, would have liked that, and then also because, you know, having that Tsukuyomi great one is just, yeah, really good too, just being able to kind of maybe even find a Calico cookout, because, you know, generally, we don't literally add anything from the top five, I'm pretty sure, so, 
it's, it's yeah it's, it's good because like yeah you you'll see like you see like what you're versing and you adjust like you, you get whatever you want no it's like a really like yeah it's, it's just yeah, really a really strong engine yeah i also do agree that i might um try to teach you uh attitude only because i did actually verse dp <laughs> my last yeah, round gosh. <laughs> And, um, boy oh boy, I am glad that I'm on the Sentinel crits because it, it's, it, it's not, doesn't have the can't be hit, it's really just a big massive shield, so what I was doing to survive is I was using Dory and stuff as well to find those Sentinel crits and just make it as big as possible to like to go like two pass. Um, I was definitely a bit of a crackhead though, uh, because on um, one of the their swings, I made it two to pass, and they had five drive checks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are some good odds. Though. I was like, yeah, you oh, feel like getting lucky, right? Oh, that's what you have to do. You have to hard guard it. That's yeah, and that's what I was like. I was like, okay, like I, I was like, okay, I'm glad that the octagon magazine exists. Then I was like, okay, uh, yeah, I do what you did. You know, I went to rise to octagon octagon magus. It's technically like a a 50k shield. 50k? No, uh, 55k shield or something like that. So I was like, okay, I have that. I put a couple of the sample crits down. So like, I can make it like two in a pass. And I did that twice, and they did not hit two triggers from the five drive checks. Oh my god. I was shitting myself. So yes, I think I'm always saying thank you too. <laughs> yeah, definitely strong card. Definitely strong card. Oh, bloody earth. The... But um, anyway, though, uh, Thank you so much, uh, Barnabas, for, um, you know, uh, let, again, allowing me to interview you, you know, kind of giving you, uh, giving me your thoughts on why you run certain cards. Uh, before we go, did you have any shout-outs at all? Um, uh, basically the Games Corner, like, study group, um, which is Jonah, Davy Yang, like, Basically, uh, Will, Peter, Richie. As well. Richie, I consider my clan leader, so I owe, I owe pretty much everything to him. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so basically everyone, everyone there, everyone in the Alliance, John, Ivan, um, yeah, amazing people, all the locals there. Um, yeah, GG Central, James Strong, like holding it down. He's also in Indo at the moment, so good luck to him. Oh, he's yeah. fighting. He's, yeah, he's fighting for his life over there. So <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, there's some big hitters over there. I just saw Derek and Man Long like take a photo together, so I don't know how he's gonna go. Well, no, thank you for that. Um, and yeah, also, oh, before I forget, yeah, Brandon as well, the namesake of the deck. Oh, and, yeah, true, uh, true. <laughs> Francis, the one that sold me the half of the deck as well. They, oh, they got me there. <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing guys. Oh, um, okay, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, if you did, make sure to leave a like, and while you're down there, why not subscribe and hit the notification bell so when I upload another video, you will be notified. Hey dogs out, see ya! Cheers!